you alive to bring, keeping us alive today. Thank you for waking us up this morning, starting on a brand new Unmuted. day. Unmuted. We thank you for our sick and our shutting. Keep and keep them all, keep them safe. USA, pray for our nation, our world. I love, we need more love in this world. I love going west coast. Pray for the George Ford family. We pray for the victims that have been affected by the COVID-19. Hope they, hope they're safe. Hope they um prayer. And I hope they face stay positive, Lord. We pray for our president and our cabinet today. We pray for our health care workers on the front line every day. Battling, battling, battling every day. We pray for our children and our grandchildren going back to school. We pray for our nurses and hospitals, nursing homes. We pray for the pastors and families all over the nation. Keep, God, keep us out of harm's way. Let's end all racism, social injustice, killings and shootings. Police brutality. Well, I we want to thank you for the victims, the storm victims today. Go with them and stand by. You never leave them. You never leave them all the safety. Thank you for um, paying all unemployment rates. We thank you for the sick and shut in today. Ruby London, Jesse Tate, Ennis Howard, Christine Howard, James Brooks, Elmore Brown, Sarah Brown, Pastor Roy Miller, May Vaughn, Bradford family, Johnson family, Danny May Howard, and Henry London and his family, Deacon Jesse Matthews, Sister Bob and Richard King, Richard Seaton. Deacon, uh, Deacon, Deacon Ray and Ray Ruby King, Oscar Davis, Deacon Leon Washington, Sister Julia Wheelock, Pastor Davis, Pastor J. L. Franklin, Charlie Mana, Catherine Hornet, and Rosemary House. But we thank you. Thank you. Keep them all safe and out of harm's way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we turn it over to the hands of the pastor. I'll pass the burn X G King singing. When I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I have a testimony. When I look back over my life, come on, and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed, I am a testimony, got a testimony, God's been good, got a testimony, yes he has. I've got a testimony. Do you have one today? A testimony. I can truly say that I've been blessed. Come on. I can truly say that I've been blessed. I can truly say that I've been blessed. I have a testimony. Come on, clap your hand, everybody. Amen. Put those holy, sanctified hands together and give God praise. Everybody, come on, clap your hand for the Lord. God is good. He's worthy of all the honor, the glory, and the praise. Certainly, we thank God for another day. Give God glory for Deacon Robert Washington, Jr., uh, leading us in prayer, offering us our 62nd national prayer on today. Amen. Praise God. That prayer went out all across the nation. Praise God. Amen. Thank you so much for being here today. It is, in fact, a wonderful witnessing, worshiping Wednesday afternoon. Amen. Don't know about you, but I would not want to be anywhere else than where I am now. Amen. Somebody that's on Facebook, type it in. Uh, let me know if the audio is good. We had some technical difficulty on yesterday morning. Praise God. I'm assuming it's good because Sister Frida, uh, Sister Frida is typing in some of the words to the song. So apparently she heard the song. So I must, amen. 
I'm assuming that the audio is good. God bless you, Sister Frida Hobbs, Sister Frida K. Coleman Smith Hobbs. Amen. Uh, amen. Big Brother Cliff Davis. Dr. J.J. Mitchell in the house. Bless you, man. Thank you. Thank you for that. Amen. Sister Paula Reed. Sister A.J. Jones. Just a few of those on Facebook. I'd like to give a shout out to those who are on time for worship. It's very important to be on time. Amen. Thank God for those on the prayer line who are on time for worship. God bless you. Praise the name of the Lord. It's not good to show up late. Got to be on time. We serve an on-time God. Amen. May not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Never too early, never too late. Always on time. We're going to dive into our lesson. We are beginning a new series today. We concluded um, our series on yesterday morning, Living a Life That Counts. We concluded that series on yesterday, and today God has given us a new series entitled, When the Lord Says Wait. All right? Write that down now. When, when God says to wait. When God says to wait. Amen. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that first of all, we need to understand and accept the fact that God will tell us to wait. He will. Now, um, before we go too far, we want to offer our foundational uh, passage of scripture from Psalm number 27. If you can turn your Bible there, Psalm number 27, Psalm 27, you got it? And uh, we want to read two verses, praise God, and we're going to ask, um, amen, Sister Deborah McNeely to offer us those two verses in a moment. Psalm number 27. Psalm 27, everybody should be there by now. It's in the Old Testament now, don't look in the New Testament. <laughs> You're in the wrong place. Tell your neighbor, you, you don't went too far now, back up. Tell your neighbor, back up, back up, back up. Amen. Psalm 27 and um, verses, um, what did I tell y'all? Do y'all remember? Third, I think I said, 13 and 14, all right. 13 and 14, Psalm number 27, and we're gonna ask the woman of God, Sister Deborah McNeely from the Asphodel Baptist Church um, to offer us those two verses uh, at this time. Come on and give it to us, please. Yes, praise be unto God, Psalm 27. Reading from the New King James Version, verses 13 and 14. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Verse 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen. Amen. Beautifully done. Beautifully, beautifully done. Thank you, Sister Deborah McNeely. God bless your heart. All right, now, y'all know how we do during part one of all of our series of teaching, teaching series. We don't get too deep into the text um, during part one. We, we just offer us, um, the Holy Spirit guides us and leads us uh, into offering an introduction of sorts, okay? We just kind of talk, you know, we kind of freelance it, let the Holy Spirit lead guide, and so we want to get our feet wet um, as we as we get ready to to really 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 um, and you know part two is is is, is when we get in the dirt part two now <laughs> why amen amen well, that's why I want you to study this because in part two which will be Friday morning eight fifteen all right you got that Friday morning eight fifteen um, God willing God willing Central Time now watch your times on your respective area across this nation we'll be back in worship. Friday morning, uh, 8.15 for part two, God willing. And that is when we will uh, get a little bit deeper into the textual part of the lesson. But this, this series is entitled, uh, When God Says Wait. When God Says Wait. First of all, we need to know that God will say wait. He will. Okay. He will say wait now. Uh, We've got to understand that 
Uh, sometimes God say yes. Sometimes God say no. Sometimes God say wait. All right. So we got to understand that, and we got to be willing to accept that. Amen. Got to be willing to accept the will of God. Sometimes it's God's will at this moment. Watch this for us to wait. You got it. Amen. It's not necessarily saying that we will not receive. Have mercy. It's not necessarily. Not necessarily. Not necessarily saying you never receive what you're asking God for. You're not saying that necessarily. Amen. But but sometimes, amen. Yeah, we, we got to get in tune with the timing of God. Uh, God's God's timing um, is different from our timing. Okay. Um, a lot of times we want you know we want what we want you know don't we? Not tell the truth. We don't. Come on now. Y'all come on, work with the preacher. We get through this a little bit quicker today. <laughs> we, get, we get through it a bit better. Y'all work with me now. Some of us be real. We heal all of us human. When you get sick in your body, you want to be healed now, don't you? Come on, right now. Hello? Yeah. You don't want to wait to you know, get healed three weeks later and all that. You want to be healed now. You want to feel better now. When you don't have no money, your money is funny, your change is strange, you want your finance to improve now. Not tomorrow, now. Amen? Am I right about that? Hey, come on, y'all know I'm telling the truth. Amen. But sometimes, you know how it is when you want the job? You know, you just know this job is yours. You know it. This job got your name written all over it. You, 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 this is the one you want. In your, in your eyes, the way you see it, this is the one you've been waiting on. Amen. And, 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 and watch this here. You might get it. Come on. But you might not get it right now. <laughs> Gotta be willing to wait. Gotta be willing. God, sometimes God will say, wait. Sometimes God tell us, amen. Uh, sometimes God will say, amen, to wait. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. And so we need to understand that. We got some prayer requests coming through, and y'all know how we do here. We'll there's a prayer ministry. We'll stop in our tracks to pray. There's one thing we'll stop in our tracks to do here at this church. We'll stop and pray. Evangelist Tanya Harrell is um, sending some prayer requests through for Kim, Karen, and Latoya Leon. All right, Kim, Karen, and Latoya Leon. Father, in the name of Jesus, come on, prayer warriors, come on. Come on, y'all know how we do. All across the nation. Come on. Come on. In the name of Jesus, Father God. Oh God, you know what's going on. Father, we don't even know these individuals. But you know them. You made them and you know all about them. You know what they're going through. You know what their situation is. Father, in the name of Jesus, step in right now. Step in, God. Turn it around for their good. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody say amen. Come on. Somebody say amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Prayer requests, y'all send them through. Amen. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. One thing we're going to do now at this church, <laughs> we're going to pray. Jesus said, my house shall be called. Amen. The house of prayer. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I get so, I get so excited. Um, I get so, so excited when I think about prayer. When God says to wait, we are encouraged to wait on God 141 times in the canon of scripture. Write that down. Somebody said, well, I got to write that down. Just write it down. <laughs> Amen. 140 times the Holy Spirit is encouraging us to wait on the Lord in the canon of Scripture. 140 times. In one way or another, some variation of waiting on God. Are you with me? Waiting on God. Now let's be real. You know, we've talked about this pandemic before. 
Um, as a matter of fact, we talk about it almost every time we walk in the church. If not every time, probably every time we walk in this church, we mention this global pandemic, the coronavirus, COVID-19, right? And one of the things that we have already agreed on previously is that the simple fact that um, when the global, and I'm a living, I'm, I'm one, I, I was transparent, I told y'all, yes, it was, I'm guilty. When the pandemic hit, I immediately went into prayer, our church went into prayer, and, and we were, were believing God for this thing to go away. We were believing God for this thing to just, God to turn it around, but he, he hadn't done that. He hadn't done it. You got to learn how to wait. <laughs> Tell your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. It's not that it's, it's not, not going to happen. I believe in my heart. I believe the day will come. I believe the day will come. I'm not God. I don't know. But I believe that they will come when this thing will turn around. Amen. But it has not happened yet. We have to learn how to wait on God. And we need to know what to do while we're waiting. That's another good point right there. We need to know what to do. You don't just wait and sit around twiddling your thumbs. Come on. With nothing to do. Amen. While you're waiting on God, you'll continue to pray to God, talk to God, study the scriptures and meditating on the word of God. Amen. And encouraging yourself by way of God's word. That amen, in God's time, come on somebody, in God's time, uh, amen, things will get better. And so we need to know that there are some biblical principles that are essential, essential now. That word essential means necessary. That it, they, they, they are essential for living our Christian lives as God desires, okay? One major component, one major part of that is being able to wait. Being able to wait. Uh, we must, as a Christian now, we must have patience. That's one of the virtues that we need as a Christian. If you're going to be successful, if you're going to live a life, um, amen, that is pleasing to God, you must be patient. Amen. Some, some of y'all don't be patient with people. So you know you're going to be patient with God. <laughs> amen. Come on, y'all know it's the truth. Amen. Amen. Some folk, some folk are so impatient with other people. Let alone God. Come on. But they don't stop to realize that, amen, there are some areas in their life. Come on. That that they that, that require people to be patient with them. Amen. Because really. God is not finished with any of us. Okay, how long you been saved? Amen. And I know some of y'all brag on how long you been saved, but, but, but can I tell you, that don't mean a thing. Amen. Can I tell you that? That don't mean a thing. Hello? Because the Bible records, there is a parable in the Word of God. Listen, let me share this with you. If you've been saved for 50 years, come on. And somebody else becomes saved today. Both of y'all on the same level in the kingdom. Y'all missing me. Y'all missing me. Uh, when y'all get to heaven, your seat not going to be any closer to God to the throne than his seat. Come on. <laughs> it doesn't matter how long you've been saved, baby. Just get saved. I wish you don't wait too late. Just do it. Come on, somebody. Y'all remember? Y'all, oh, don't get me started. Y'all remember when Jesus was hung on Calvary's hill between the two thieves. Y'all remember that? Amen. And, and one on the left, one on the right, and, and, and they were totally opposite of one another, weren't they? Now both of them were guilty. Both of them were, both of them were guilty of the crime that they had committed. They were, amen, they were thieves, right? The Bible says they were thieves. Well, the thieves are steal, right? <laughs> Grandmama said, if you lie, you steal. <laughs> Y'all know, y'all know grandmama. Hey, all of us got the same grandmama. Grandmama say you got to watch people who tell lies. 
Because if they lie, they'll steal. <laughs> Amen. Come on, help me here today so we can get through this lesson. Amen. Praise God. But, 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 but listen here now. But listen here now. When we begin to look at those two thieves, one of them, amen, accepted Jesus in his last breath. Yeah. Come on. One of them accepted Christ in his last breath. He said, Lord, remember me. Mm. When you come into your father's kingdom. Amen. Jesus said, I do better than that. <laughs> Jesus said, not only will I remember you, but today you're going to be with me in paradise. I wish I had. Mm -hmm. He tried to talk some sense into the other thief. The one thief tried to talk sense into the other thief. You know that the one over there, that, that thief over there. <laughs> do your hand like this. You're on Facebook. Do your hand like this. The thief over there. Come on, do it again. Say the thief over there. <laughs> Amen. He tried to talk sense into him. He said, Man, you sound crazy. Because he was talking all that noise. You know how people didn't know. He said, he said, now you call yourself the son of God. Save us and save yourself at the same time. Come on. Come on. You got the power. You, if you, if you, you're truly who you say you are. Come on, somebody. Amen. The one thing tried to talk sense into him. Said, man, man, you sound crazy, man. This man is innocent. This man has done nothing wrong. Now, we guilty. <laughs> we get, now, we, we deserve what we get. Come on. Yeah, yeah, we deserve to die. We deserve to be crucified. But this man ain't done nothing. Hello, somebody. And then he turned his attention to Jesus Christ. He said, Lord, remember me. Mm. So that proves to us that um, all of us are on, on the same level playing field. Amen. The main thing, it does not matter how long you've been saved. Watch this here. Amen. Just get saved. Tell your neighbor, just get saved. Tell your neighbor, today is your day. Mm. Mm. Look at your neighbor say, say neighbor Today is your day Get saved today Hello somebody Amen Because that's just That's just how patient God is with us And God want us to be patient with us He want us to wait on him Now God waited On that thief Bible does not give the age The thief How old he was Amen But he accepted him into the kingdom Y'all with me so as the Lord expect us to wait, uh, uh, as, as the Lord uh, waits on us, come on somebody, he's willing to wait on us and be patient with us, we are uh, expected to, amen, to, 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 to be willing to wait on the Lord. There will be times, I hope you've written it down by now, there will be times, my brothers and sisters, when the Lord will tell us to wait. You, you won't get everything you want when you want it. And some of the stuff you want, you'll never receive because it's not in the will of God. You know, some of that stuff we want, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. Some things we want in our lives, we want it because we think it's best. Right? Right? We want it because we think it's best. But 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 when we when we consider the will of God, right? When we consider the will of God, Amen, Amen, Amen. Oftentimes, uh, God's will, what is contained in the will of God, is not contained in our own personal will for our lives, Amen. And so, um, perhaps one of the most important lessons that we need to learn is to obey God. And leave all the consequences up to him. Write that down. Obey God. And leave all consequences up to him. Amen. And then number three. Learn to wait on God for his timing. God has a time set for everything. Please ask his chapter three says unto everything there's a season. And a purpose under the heaven. 
There's a season. Time to laugh, time to cry. Come on. Amen. Time to live, time to die. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. Praise God. And so, obeying God does not um, only include doing what He desires of us, but it also includes um, waiting on God. Amen. There it is. Amen. Obeying God does not always, uh, does not only include doing what He wants us to do. You know, you think about obeying God, you say, well, as long as I do what the Lord said, do it, fine. No, yeah, that's a part of it. But another part of it is uh, being willing to wait on God. Okay? We've got to be willing to wait on the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're placing emphasis on that word. You're probably going to hear that word uh, in today's lesson over 100 times. You probably heard it 25, 30 times already. And as we move forward in this series, you're going to hear it <laughs> some more hundreds of times. Amen. Because that's where our main emphasis is in this lesson, waiting on God. When God says wait. All right. When God, when God says, some folk, here's a, here's a problem in the church. Some, some people are more willing, amen, if we look at the other, you know, we just talked about uh, the fact that some people are impatient with people, let alone God. Some people don't want to be impatient with other people, right? Uh, but on the other end of the spectrum, uh, the, the, the other fact exists that sometimes some people are more willing to wait uh, on other people as opposed to God. Right? Amen? And so when God said, sometimes when people say, wait, we say, okay, got all the patience in the world. But then when, but then when God says, wait, we got a problem. Amen. And so we must be careful with that. We must be careful. We must, we must be sure that, 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 that we are, that we are patient with God. Amen. That we are patient with the Lord. Amen. Because our lives is in the hand of God. Can I tell you something that you may not, you may or may not want to accept, but I got to say it anyway. God knows what's best for you. Write that down. God knows what's best. Yeah, he knows what's best. He knows. He knows what's best. Amen. He knows what's best. Amen. All things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. That's Romans 8 and 28. Very familiar verse. Most of y'all can quote that one real, real easily. Amen. All things. Amen. Uh, Paul said to the church at Rome, um, and we know all things work together for the good. For the good. Now, 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 you might not want to accept this. This might be quite difficult to accept. But let me throw it on out there anyway. The pandemic is included in the process. This global pandemic is included in the process of God knowing what's best for us. Because much of what that God will allow, amen, uh, we're not going to agree with it anyway. But he's working it out for our good. I know it's difficult to accept that. I know, I know. But you got to natural. You got to push that natural thought, that, that 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 process of natural thinking, push it to the side. We're all spiritual now. We're all spiritual here. Amen. We're all spiritual here. Don't think with the natural mind, but think with the, Amen with your spirit. Speak with your think with your spirit now. And you'll be able to comprehend that very, very easily. Because you got to understand now, everything that happened, God allowed it to happen. Right? You look at Job, man, I'm serious. You look at the life of Job, and remember his three friends came by, all right? And this is after, you know, he had lost everything and everybody except his wife. His wife was still living. And, um... It was just basically just he and his wife. He had lost all of his material possessions. He had, all of his children were gone. It was just he and his wife. Amen. And his friends came by, right? 
And y'all know he had an encounter with his wife. He had to, you know, deal with that. And then he had to deal with his friends. Y'all remember that? Now, his friends thought, I'm sure, they thought it was over for Job. It was over. There was no coming back from that. I mean, a man sitting around looking all pitiful, you know, his flesh just peeling away from his body, worms uh, eating at his flesh, you know, and he's just sitting there looking all pitiful. And you can just imagine uh, uh, his, his, his countenance, you know, his, his, his disposition. You can imagine how Job looked in the natural. You can imagine. Come on, with your neck. Come on, come on, come on now. Amen. You can imagine how bad he looked. Amen. But, but, but on the inside, huh, he was well intact. Amen. Amen. He was still uh, where he needed to be in God. And I'm sure his friends thought it was over. His friends began to ridicule him and, and, uh, Speak negative things, you know. Uh, not only did they think the thought, but they allowed the thought to come out of their mouths. And they, everything they said was negative, negative, negative. You know anybody like that? <laughs> Never got nothing positive to say. <laughs> Amen. Always say something negative. Amen. Praise God. And, and, but, if you, but if you discover. Now, 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 now watch this here. After a man of time, we never hear anything about the friends anymore. Study that. Study the book of Job. After a matter of time, we don't hear anything. They just, it's like they just left the scene. Can't you imagine the way his friends felt when they heard the news? Amen. When you get down to chapter 42 and you, and, you, and you discover that God gave him double for his trouble, when you discover that God multiplied, amen, what he had, not only did God give him what he had, uh, uh, equal what he lost not only did God equal what he lost but God multiplied come on talk to me God multiplied that which he had in the beginning amen see that's the kind of God we serve we serve a God that that amen that deal with multiplication and addition come on you don't, you don't deal with subtraction and division he, come on talk to me some. he didn't come to divide us he came to bring us together the God we serve deals with addition and multiplication that's all he's about. And so, uh, when we think about this global pandemic, when we think about all the other stuff as well um, that we're going through down here on earth, in this world, uh, you have to think about the life of Job. As a Christian, you have to. You have to think about the life of Job. And when you do, uh, when you look at what Job went through, and God still brought him out, come on. Job was willing to wait on God. God told Job to wait, and he waited. Amen. Job said, Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust. Job said, listen, I'm going to wait until my change comes. I'm going to wait. I know it looked bad. I know. He had to even tell his wife at one point, he said, I know, I know, baby, it looked bad, I know, I know it looked bad, amen, but I, I'm going to hold on to God. I know, I know you tired of me going through this, and you, you, you know, you just really, you, I know you care about me, you're just looking out for me, I know, but, but I ain't going to do what you say do. <laughs> I'm going to hold on to God, <laughs> amen, come on somebody. I'm going to wait. See, God says wait sometime. God will say wait. And that's what exactly what he expects us to do. Is to wait on him. Amen. And so, um, brothers and sisters, uh, when you look at the life of Job, and it's right there in the last chapter, I believe chapter number 42, when you look at the, at the life of Job and you, you press uh, fast forward and you and project into the, his future, uh, you discover the Bible give record now. Everything that Job had and lost, every single thing. See, God didn't just, 
God didn't just throw out some blessings to Job. God made sure that everything Job had and lost was multiplied. Every single possession. He had X number of cattle and sheep and oxen and all of that. And y'all know what I'm talking about. It's right there in the Bible. He, and, and in the beginning, he had all... He, the Bible give. Let's see, it's no, it's no coincidence now. The Holy Spirit does it for a reason. The Holy Spirit gives us exactly how many he had. Come on. Y'all got to study the life of Job. It's right there in the Bible. The Holy Spirit provides a, the exact number of thousands of sheep and oxen and all that. And then in chapter 42, you see how God multiplies. <laughs> Come on, talk to me. You gotta understand. That we need to know what to do when God says to wait. We we need we just we just we just simply need to know what to do. We don't sit around as Christians and we're just twilling our thumbs and and um, you know trying to do some things, occupy our time, and trying to figure out you know what to do. We just sit around bored. No, no, that's that's not what you that's not what you do. Now I, I do want to mention the fact. Now no, we're not going to get deep into the, to, 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 the uh, textual part of the lesson, but. I do want to mention the fact that this is a Psalm of David. Okay. I do want to I do want to make that I want to clarify that this is a Psalm of David. Psalm number 27 is a Psalm of David. And now uh, for the most part, we as Christians are only familiar with the first three verses. Uh, shall I say the first four verses? And and really uh, uh, I can really break it down from there because, uh, for the most part, even 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 to get a little more clear for you, we'll we'll uh, some of us are only familiar uh, with the first verse. The Lord is my light and my salvation; whom shall I fear? Right? Y'all heard that? The Lord is the strength of my life; of whom shall I be afraid? That's verse number one. Now that's just about for some people. That's just about as far as you go. But but tell your neighbor you got to keep reading. You got to keep reading. Now, don't get me wrong. Verse 1 is powerful. My God. David opens up this psalm by clarifying who God is to him. It's in the text. David, David wants us to understand now. David said, okay, now, as he's led by the Holy Spirit, David said, now, before I even begin, <laughs> I, 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 I want to let y'all know what happened to me. And why God is so important in my life. Because verse 2, he, go, he goes in the text. says, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Why? Because he knew God. It's in the text. I'm not making, I promise, I'm not, I promise, I'm not making it up. It's right there in the text. And so brothers and sisters, um, yes, we're all very familiar with verse number one. Um, yes, some others probably uh, less number of people are familiar with uh, verse two, three, and four. Uh, but for primarily verse number one, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, whom shall I be afraid? We're very familiar with that. That's another verse that some of us can quote very easily. But when you keep reading, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. my, 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 my. when you keep reading, Lord have mercy. The Holy Spirit can open up some new uh, realities unto you in your walk with God when you keep reading. Amen. Because, because the very last verse of this psalm, David said, wait on the Lord. Y'all see it. He said, wait on the Lord. After all that he said in 13 verses, he closes out by saying, wait on God. Amen. And he offers us, in the, within the 13 verses, he offers us validating points. Right? Or, uh, shall I say, justifiable, all right, instances whereby he has waited on God and God came through. 
Amen. See, that's the key. That's the key to making it. When, you, when you're going through hell and high water, is to relate to scripture. Think about those who also went through hell and high water and then press fast forward and see how they made it. That's all you have to do. That's all you have to do. Amen? That's all you have to do. And when you do that, you say, well, okay, amen, if, if Peter made it, out of all the, all, all the time, all the different ways he messed up, all the hell he went through, come on, if Peter made it, I can make it. Amen. If Job made it, I can make it. If Abraham made it, good God of mine, I can make it. If Moses and Joshua made it, I can make it. Come on. All I have to do is wait on God. Not only, not only trust in him, but then be willing to wait on him. Because God will instruct us to wait. Come on, somebody. He's not necessarily saying that you're not going to get the job. Just wait. It's not necessarily saying you're not going to get the house. Just wait. It's not necessarily saying that your body's not going to be healed. Just wait. Hey, come on. Not, 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 not necessarily. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Come on, somebody say the word necessarily. <laughs> Not necessarily saying. Oh, he said, wait on me. David said in verse 14, wait on God. Amen. I can wait on him. I wonder, I wonder if there's anybody here that's willing to wait on God. I, I, I wonder. I, I, I really, I, I wonder, I, 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 I wonder. I, I, I wonder if there's anybody here willing to wait on God. Amen. You can't help me. <laughs> Please don't stop me. Move out of my way. Don't try to block me. Got a race to run. And I'm running my faith at the finishing line. <laughs> Gonna see God's faith. Woo. If you can't help me, sing with me, y'all. Please don't stop me. Move out of my way. Don't try to block me. You know, because some folk, some folk would discourage you from waiting like Job's wife did. Y'all, you see what I'm talking about? See how, that, see how this song fits in? Some folk, some, not necessarily be a spouse. It could be anybody. Some folk will discourage you from waiting. Just like his three friends did when they passed by. Job, you looking mighty bad, man. What you did? What, you must have done something wrong. How did you disappoint God? Mm. Got a race to run <laughs> And I'm running by faith Woo. At the finishing line Come on, sing it, Sister Gail William <laughs> Come on I'll see God's faith I've been running for Jesus A long time Running both night and day. Don't have time for idle thought. It might cause me to lose this race. Amen. If you can't help me, please don't stop me. Tell your neighbor, move out of my way. Don't try to block me. Got a race to run. And I'm running by faith. Woo. Finishing line. I'm going to see God's faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hand. Come on, clap your hand. Tell God, thank you. Amen. I learned to wait on God. I learned to wait. 
God, God will save me. He will save me. Amen. Can't let folk discourage you from waiting. Amen. Can't let folk discourage you. Amen. In other words, you, you got to make sure that, you, that you're, amen, listening to the right people, that, you, that you're hanging around the right Your company means a lot when you're waiting. Somebody needed to hear that. It might have been me. <laughs> Somebody needed to hear it. My God. Your company means a lot while you're waiting. Man. You listen. You, you, can't, you can't hang with everybody while you're waiting on God. Sometimes you got to dismiss some people. Mm -hmm. It's not that you don't love them. Come on. It's not that you don't love them. It's not that you're not there for them. Sometimes you got to dismiss some people. I wish you had a witness. Amen. You wait, here it is, you waiting on God, and, and amen, you, all your time, it is 85, 90% of your time is spent with people who are discouraging you from waiting on God, for waiting on God. Amen, they don't want you to wait on God. Why? Because they want, they don't want to see you with anything. Come on. They don't want to see you get ahead of them. All right? Got to watch it. Got to watch your company. Got to watch those that... Some some folks you gotta stop calling them so much. I know I'm hurting y'all with that one, cause y'all love that phone. <laughs> some folks some folks gotta stop calling them so much. Folks ain't got nothing good to tell you. Come on. All they do is look for a way to discourage you, <laughs> and you ain't realize it yet. Every time you realize it, watch it. You ain't realize it yet. Every time you hang up the phone from them or leave their house, you feel low and depressed. Every time. And you've been trying to figure out, why do I feel so bad? Every time I talk to Sally. Watch the company. Sister Paula Reed, you got it right. Watch the company you keep. You got to watch it. I'm talking about why you're waiting now. Why you're waiting on God. While you're waiting on God, amen, Sister Violet William Clinton, Sister Violet William says, say it again. Okay, yes, ma'am, I'll say it again. Watch the company you keep while you're waiting on God. You can't, y'all got it mixed up, man. Come on, stop calling everybody. Hey, get, get in your prayer room, get in your war room. Come on, we talked, we had a series on the war room now. During the pandemic, early in the pandemic. Hope y'all didn't miss that series. Talk about the war room. Woo. Everybody need a war room. And get in your war room. I'm not saying that you isolate yourself from people. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. Amen. Tell your neighbor that ain't what he's saying. I'm not saying you can't be sociable with people. Isolate you. But you have to watch the company you keep. Watch it. Your company means a great deal while you're waiting on God. Amen. And listen, uh, watch this here now because you got to watch it now because, because if you're with the right company, when hell and high water come, you'll be going through it with the right people. I wish I had <laughs> I wish I had. See, the three Hebrew boys, watch this here. See, they was already together. See, they was already on one accord. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. 
They was already on one accord. They was already spending all their time together. So when hell came and high water came, come on here, they went through it together. I don't listen. I don't mind going through hell, but I want to go through hell with somebody that's on the same page with me. Well, I'm most of it. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't, I don't know about. I don't know about you. Amen. I don't know about you, but we all. Amen. I don't know about you, but 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 listen. Your company means a great deal while you're waiting on the Lord. I can't say that enough. It means a great deal. You gotta be careful. You gotta be careful. Some folk you just gotta pass on by. You drive by the house and I, I know, I know, you know, they're gonna act funny. They're gonna say, I saw you. I was looking out the window. Was that you just passed? <laughs> you know, come on. I was sitting on the porch and, and uh, I thought, was that you? Look like your car. Was that you just passed? I know you normally stop by on your way from work. Was that you? Yeah, that was me. Well, why you ain't stop? Come on. And you ain't got to lie to them. They said, no, I know I didn't stop with me, but I, I didn't stop today. I'm going on to the house. God bless you. Love you in the Lord. Amen. You got to do I start all the lies now. <laughs> You ain't got to start dressing it up. Just tell them like it is. I'm going to the house. Call me if you need me, but I'm going to the house. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But in your mind, you're saying you ain't got nothing good to say. No way. Y'all don't like me. Never have an encouraging word. Here it is. You know I'm waiting on God to do something in my life. And I need you to tell. I need you to look me in the eye and say, listen to me. Hold on to God's unchanged hand. He's going to do it for you. Hold on. But I never hear that out of your mouth. Y'all missing me. We're almost through. <laughs> How many times? <laughs> How many times a preacher say that? <laughs> Amen. Say about ten times. Don't, you know, don't be nowhere close to being through. <laughs> Y'all know it's the truth. <laughs> Amen. Tell me I'm about to close. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Come on. Amen. I'm about to close. Amen. And I'm getting ready to close here. Lord. <laughs> but I want y'all to know before I close. <laughs> well, if you get ready to close, go on close. <laughs> Y'all know I'm telling the truth. I didn't be reading y'all mind. Because <laughs> I say it myself. I say I'm getting ready to close. <laughs> but let me say this before I close. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You got to find humor. And there is so much humor in the word of God. God wants us to enjoy, man. Enjoy uh, worship and fellowship. You got to find humor in it. I'm telling you. You got to do it. You got to do it. Amen. Praise God. I, I'm so glad I'm not one of those preachers that um, never smile and always so holy, you know. Always got a word, prophetic word. You, know, you got to watch them. Every time you see them, you can't, can't even go grocery shopping. They got a prophetic word. I ain't talking about nobody. I ain't talking about nobody. Y'all don't take this nowhere. <laughs> I was talking about them preaching. No, I'm talking about preaching. I'm talking about myself. Come on, I'm not talking, I'm just saying what I'm saying. I'm just saying what I'm saying, and I'm through with that. Amen. Got to watch those. Come on. Can't, can't stand up and have a conversation with you. <laughs> yeah. But God told me to tell you. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm just talking about the weather, man. Do you think it's going to rain? Tell me that. <laughs> Since you know everything. Is it going to rain tomorrow? Yeah, let me go on, because y'all going to take this the wrong way. And and then I'm gonna be in trouble. So let me leave that alone. Um, uh, this is on Facebook, and then y'all gonna start talking about me. I don't want y'all talking about me. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. Let's move on with our lesson. We are, but we are. I'm serious this time when I tell you we're getting ready to close because we got just a few minutes, and and I'm tempted to go ahead and stick a pin here 
because uh, we're almost at the one o'clock hour and I want to leave time to deal with some things. Yeah, let's stick a pin there. Uh, that's part one of our series of teaching our learning series here when God says wait. I believe we, we um, I believe part one was fruitful. I believe, if you believe it was fruitful, type it in. Say part one was fruitful. Say it was productive. Amen. Tell me, let me know you got something out of part one. Got something out of it. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to invite you to Jesus Christ. Uh, in fact, if there's someone out there that do not know the Lord, in part of your sin, um, the Lord desires to have a close relationship with you, close fellowship um, with you. All you have to do is believe in his son, Jesus. Amen. Believe in his son, Jesus, that he sent his son to die. God so loved the world, John 3, 16, uh, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth upon him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. You got to believe that in your heart that he died on Calvary's hill and Calvary mountain. And, um, and the third day he rose with all power. And if, that, if that's you, just go ahead and ex accept Christ into your heart. And, now, and from this moment forward, that means that you're saved. Um, you're going to heaven. Ain't they? It's as simple as that. Now, if you believe it, you believe it in your heart, you confess it with your mouth just a moment ago, or if you're doing it right now across this nation, you're going to heaven. Welcome to the family. Welcome. Y'all put your hand together. Welcome to the family. God bless you. Now go and find your church now in your area. Now I know the pandemic going on, a lot of churches not back in, but you can tie in with one virtually. Stay here with us. Stay here with Simply the Word. Amen. Even if you find a local church uh, to worship at, stay here with Simply the Word. That's one thing we don't do. We don't, this ministry or this church does not require you to leave your local church. You stay at your local church. Support your pastor. Support the vision that God gave him. Amen. And you can still be here with us. Amen. Uh, with simply the word. Doing what God um, is doing in, in this season. Thank you so much. Uh, praise God. We've been here for almost, in a few months, we're going to be celebrating 10 years. Um, we don't know how that's going to happen, how to, you know exactly what's going to take place. Normally we travel to a different part of the country and celebrate, and that's what we're going to plan on doing. Atlanta, Georgia, we're on the way. Um, of course, now Dallas area is thrown in the mix. Uh, amen. We're getting a lot, a lot of support in the Dallas area. Praise God. So that's thrown in the mix now. We're just praying. Praise God. See what the Lord's going to do, going to say, and we're going we're gonna to go from there. Amen. Uh, our prayer is that this pandemic will lift tremendously, um, tremendously, so that we can be feeling more comfortable boarding aircraft and thing and traveling and being around one another and all of that. Um, brothers and sisters, continue to wear your masks. Continue to social distance yourself, please. Continue to wash your hands. Use hand sanitizer. Keep some sanitizer in your vehicle at all times with you in your purse for the ladies, in your vehicle for the men. Keep it with you at all times. Um, when you cannot wash your hands, use some sanitizer. Amen. Don't let your guard down just because time has gone by. Don't do that. We still need to be cognizant. We still need to be alert. We still need to be aware. Amen. And, um, and, and very in tune to what's going on. Um, there's a whole lot happening in the world that, that, that could distract us. Yeah, it's election time, you know, in November 30th is election day. And we're going to be talking more about that. Census deadline, the census deadline is November, uh, 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 September 30th, the end of this month. You must have completed your census. Now, let me say this because y'all know I don't cut no corners. If you're listening to me right now, and you have not yet done your census, your census 2020, shame on you. Shame on you. Census 2020 should have been done months ago. If you have not done it, shame on you. I love you. Now, I love you now, but y'all know me. Don't get mad with me. Evangelist Tanya Harrow, you remember that? Don't, don't get mad with me. You know, I got to tell the truth. Shame on you. Do your senses, man. Take three minutes. 
Amen. And what it means is funding coming into your community, to your neighborhood. Roads and highways and bridges and, you know, all of that. The list goes on. So they need to know um, who's, in your, who's in your household. Now, uh, 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 we had a Zoom call last night, simply the word. Um, Zoom call for voter registration. Yesterday was National Voter Registration Day. And simply the word, this church right here, uh, we're getting more into, uh, you know, the things that's going on um, uh, out in the world. And we're branching out. You know, if you're going to be a real ministry, you got to be involved. Ministry is about people. And so we partnered with Planned Parenthood and we hosted a um, Zoom call last night. Some of you all were on the call. Praise God. Sister Paula Reed, uh, Sister Balls, Sister Carolyn. Uh, I don't know who else, but I know I saw their names pop up. And uh, it was very successful. Praise God. Early voting is uh, getting ready to begin. They changed the date for early voting. Early voting is from October 16th through the 27th. October 16th through the 27th early voting and then the actual voting day is November 3rd all right so please ma'am please sir make sure you register I think the deadline for register to be registered is October 5th okay I think I got that right October 5th so make sure don't assume you're registered make sure you're registered and then after you know you're registered step number two is to actually get up and go vote all right your voice is your vote your voice you don't have a voice if you don't go vote simple as that this is a major election, presidential election, right? Donald Trump, Joe Biden, uh, I think the first debate is coming up in a few days or something like that. So, um, main thing is that you vote, right? All right. So, we want to uh, lift this offering, Cash App, STW Ministry, STW Ministry, Cash App, uh, or Buck Glenn King. Those are the two Cash Apps that we have. STW Ministry and also Buck Glenn King. All right, PO Box. You want to mail it in? PO Box one six six. PO Box one six six. DS Louisiana seven zero seven two seven. That's by way of check of money on only. All right. Now um, we we want you to be reminded about our yearly seed of two hundred twenty dollars. This is the year of twenty twenty. Um, annual seed, $220. Many of you have already sown that seed. Uh, some have not, so we want to keep that before you as the Lord leads. Also, make simply the word a part of your monthly allotment or bi-weekly bi allotment as the Lord leads. As the Lord leads, okay? Um, and we, then we have this other group of people. we got several categories. Then we got this other group of people that give every time we're in worship you know we pass the tray the, the, the offering tray you know virtually and 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 some folk um give every time every time you know because that's what they they are led to do so we want to encourage you to give um according to how the lord lead you to give okay praise the lord we are we're getting ready to pray again we have to we are certainly we well, we already prayed for Kim, Karen, and Latoya Leon. We're going to pray for them. I want y'all. hope y'all wrote those names down. Kim, Karen, and Latoya Leon. Pray for them. Um, bless the Lord. Amen. And uh, thank you, Evangelist Tanya Harold. She is in the house today, y'all. Amen. Woman of God is in the house. We Hammond, Louisiana. Oh, did we have a good time in Hammond, Louisiana. What year was that? I don't know what year that was. That was, that was about four or five years ago. We was in Hammond, Louisiana. Amen. Mama Ruby Causey. Going on to be with the Lord. Evangelist Tanya Harrell. Sister Cynthia Daniels. I believe Sister Cynthia's birthday is today, uh, Evangelist Harold. I think I saw it on Facebook. I, I, I sent her a shout out. I think it's today. You should know. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You should know. Praise God there in Hammond, Louisiana. Also, um, Sister Danielle Carter James. All right. Uh, Evangelist Harold, you tell her, tell that woman of God that we miss her and we need to we need to hear from her. Amen. We need to see her face. We need to hear her voice. Praise the Lord. We trust and pray that all is well um, with her family, her husband and her family, children. 
and all praise the name of the Lord. Uh, Dr. Lawrence Narcisse sent a request through that we pray for Reverend Mitchell. His son passed away. Um, and so we need to lift him up uh, as well. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for your lesson today. And God, we lift up now in the name of Jesus, Reverend Mitchell, God, in the passing of his son. Look upon his family, I pray, and give them strength in Jesus' name. Father, we lift up Kim, Karen, and Latoya Leon. God, you know what's going on. We don't know. And Lord, we don't need to know because you're a God that knows all things. And Father, wherever they need you, God, wherever area they need you, give them strength now where they're weak and give them courage to go on in Jesus' name. Make every crooked way straight in the name of Jesus. Father, we love you, God. We give you honor today. We praise your holy and righteous and divine name. God, we thank you. We're lifting up, God, uh, Deaconess Rosemary Hollins in the name of Jesus. We, we're asking you to look upon her now, Father God. We ask you to look upon Brother Devontae Freeman. Touch him, God. Heal him in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, you have all power. Oh, God, pass by by your spirit, Sister Barbara Edwards. In Jesus' name, Mother Sarah Brown. Brother Ennis Hollins, pass by by your spirit. Touch them, heal them, set them free in Jesus' name. Encourage their heart in the name of Jesus. Lord, we love you and we thank you and we praise you. And Father, there are some names we did not call, but Lord, you know our hearts. And we pray, God, that you would look upon them. Look upon Dr. Eugene, Dallas, Texas. Touch right now, God, his situation. Lay your hand upon him. Oh, God, look down upon those in, on the West Coast that are enduring the wildfires. Keep them safe, God. In the name of Jesus. God, we know you have power to blow your breath on it and shut it all down. All the flames of fire will suddenly go out, God. You got power to do it. Oh, Father, we're asking you to do it in Jesus' name, in your way, in your word, in your season. God, we thank you. We ask you to look upon this nation as a whole. Father God, look upon those in the path of Hurricane Beta. And, and all of the other tropical storms and those in the past of the bad weather, God, down on the Gulf and the coastline in Houston, Texas, and various places. God, touch now. All of us, God, we need you. Cannot make it without you. God, we trust you to help us. We love you. And we say amen. Come on. Come on, shout amen. Come on, everybody, shout amen. Get ready to go, y'all. Get ready to go. This evening, 6.15 until 7.15, one hour. We'll be back on the same prayer line and uh, uh, we'll be on Facebook, but not on this page. I want y'all to keep that, you know, keep that. we'll be on the local church page, okay? This evening um, on the Hickory Grove and McEwen Church, Baptist Church page. Search for that page, like the page, follow the page, all that good stuff. Um, go to the YouTube channel. Uh, simply the word YouTube. You, simply the word has a YouTube channel, um, and that's the name of the YouTube channel. Simply the word Church. Look for that YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe to that channel, please, ma'am. Please, sir, do that. Do that. Help us. Help us in that area. I pray that you would do it. That you would do it. Just, just do it because I'm asking you to do it. <laughs> Amen. Love you so much. God bless you, brother Cliff David, brother Oscar Davis, there in the Dallas area. Sister Violet Williams and. Amen. Some others that are still here with us, Sister Barb on Facebook, Sister Gail William. Amen. And Sister Paula Reed. Um, praise God. These are Facebook people that are still hanging in here with us. I know we went over our time a little bit, and we do apologize, but um, sometimes sometime that happens. Amen. Sister A.J. Jones. Uh, amen. All of them that are here might have missed one or two uh, more. Um, but we thank God for all of those. Dr. J.J. Mitchell was here earlier, and we thank him for sticking his head in the door. God bless you all, and God keep you is our prayer. I believe we did everything. We'll wait till Friday to celebrate birthdays again to catch those. We did celebrate birthdays yesterday morning. We'll wait till Friday morning, God willing, to celebrate birthdays, catch those on the end of the week. 
and going into next early next week as well, and our wedding anniversaries as well. Love you in the Lord Jesus, and there is nothing you can do about it. If you meet me and forget me, don't worry, because you hadn't missed a thing. I'm just a nobody <laughs> trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. But here's the thing, if you meet Jesus and then forget him, you have missed out on Unmuted. what? All right. All right. I like that. God bless you. Y'all have a great a day. A lifetime. I love you all. Amen. Love you much.